IGCSE Biology 4.7, looking at energy transfer from one trophic level to the next. The diagram on the left will be familiar. It's a pyramid of energy and used to draw this to scale would be probably kilojoules. But we'll notice that of the 100% of producer, only 10% makes it to the next level in the primary consumer. And again, of the 100%, only 1% of that makes it into the secondary consumer. The question must be, what are the causes of the losses that we are seeing? Let's consider a very simple food chain. We would need a producer such as grass straight here and this has been eaten by a primary consumer, a simple little herbivorous mouse-like creature, like that, and we would have a secondary consumer here, a predator of the mouse, perhaps a uh, owl-like creature, bird of prey, that's supposed to be an owl, never mind. Okay, so we start off here with a notional 100 kilojoules of grass energy. Now this 100 kilojoules of grass energy represent the grass eaten by the herbivore. So our herbivorous mouse here is going to eat 100 kilojoules of energy. Now the 10% rule suggests that of the 100 kilojoules of energy, only 10 kilojoules of the original 100 kilojoules will become part of the mouse body and tissue. So in the muscles and the bones and the skin and the eyes and the fur of the mouse, only 10 kilojoules of the original 100 kilojoules of grass would make it this far. Why? Well, the reason is, of course, that the mice have to walk around and find their food and carry out the process of respiration. So energy will be lost by the primary consumer in respiration. Now, not all of the 100 kilojoules of energy is actually available to the mouse. For instance, mice cannot digest cellulose. So the plant cell wool cannot be digested and this contains energy and that energy would be lost in the form of feces undigested material. So we can see that if only 10 kilojoules is lost, uh, is gained by the mouse from the original 100 kilojoule meal of grass, 90 kilojoules of energy must have been lost through respiration and undigested food. The 10% rule goes on further to suggest that the owl, w when it eats the mouse, will only be able to assimilate 1% of the original 100 kilojoule of grass, which of course is 1 kilojoule. So when the owl eats the mouse, only 1% of the original 100 kilojoules 
we'll make it this far. The ten percent though. The losses to the owl, of course, are equally due to respiration, producing energy for flight, energy for digestion, energy for movement, the nervous system. But of course, not all of the mouse is available to the owl. It can't digest it all, and so some will be lost as feces. To take this one step further, we need to recall that all organisms will finally die. It's at this point that they will be broken down by microorganisms living on the dead and decaying remains of other organisms which we call the decomposers.